G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. So why are we here today at the beach? Well, a friend of mine, I was saying hi, and he said, do you want to see my new camera? And I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to see your new camera. He said, do you want to, do you want to borrow it? Do you want to have a play with it? And I said, you got to be kidding me. That's more expensive than a car. And he said, yeah, no, nah, no worries, you take it. And so here we are. Just having to do a little bit of extra charging, but look at this beast. This is the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. Sixteen bit files, fifty megapixels, medium format sensor ridiculous sized glass. I mean to give you an idea here is the the Z7 with its 85 mil in comparison to this guy with its 135 mil which I, I, I will tell you I'll write down the bottom what the equivalent lens that is because of course it's medium format so it's not the same but this is a beast and geez it's significantly heavier I would say it's twice the weight it's twice the weight two or three times the price and is it two or three times better i'm very much a believer that today today with any camera that you buy today we are all photo gods we can all do godlike things really it just comes down to as i've said many times before it comes down to your use case what are you going to do with this camera so if you want to shoot portraits landscapes product absolutely stellar will give you files like you've never seen before already with my short usage of it focus is slow that focusing that focusing drives me nuts this is the nikon z7 with the 85 mil 1.8 and this is the hasselblad 120 which is about 96 mils pretty close to 85 equivalent now i took these photographs handheld a few seconds apart and they look pretty similar, with pretty similar levels of quality. And it's hard to say which is better. Hmm. I would say, well done, Nikon. Some rain coming in. Probably a couple of kilometres out to my left here as I'm looking. But I love this tree, and it's pulling the boat in the background out of focus. Now this is a pretty difficult focal length and only having the one lens is challenging but I love this now. I've just tried to get the boat in focus and this lens went to macro. Geez, once it goes from one end of its focal throw to the other, oh, it's taking forever. So I've got a boat that's very clear in the background and it's taken three attempts to get that to go into focus. And here we go again. And, and it doesn't seem to really be very good. I was, I'll show you the shot, but I was focusing on the city skyline out there, which there's a lot of gray, but there's also some contrast. Just, it just wasn't great. Now, maybe I don't have the optimal settings. I don't know, because I don't know this camera that well. I do have a, a different Hasselblad, which is even slower and heavier and more expensive. And this is Hasselblad getting into the mirrorless space like pretty much everyone is obviously this camera's been around a little while now and the version one is probably what three or four years old now something like that so this th theoretically this is a camera that gives you absolutely state-of-the-art the very best image quality that money could buy and very little would be better than this that's the sell that's the pitch i'm sure it's true I've been extremely happy with the 16-bit files that I get out of my camera. And just to jump sideways, this is my Hasselblad H4D60. It's a 60 megapixel camera, so you can see it's almost pushing 9,000 pixels by almost 7,000 pixels. This is with my 24 millimeter lens, which is something, I can't quite remember, something around a 14 or a 16 mil. And the files, because they're 16 bit, th this, this color rendition is so accurate, so accurate and so deep. And here we are looking pixel for pixel, we'll just give it a chance to render. But 
just have a look through here how glorious these pixels are looking. Now this is on a tripod. We can see here a 16 second exposure at ISO 50, the aperture at 5.6. This camera shoots about one and a half frames a second. So as you can see, when I talk about not being worried about high frame rates, I'm not. A guy who buys a camera like this, which I did buy a camera like this and still have it and love it, and I'll be making some more work from it soon. This thing is a beauty of color, bit depth, focus, depth of field, etc. It's not for high speed sports. And this environment here, this laneway here, is a great opportunity to stretch its legs with color and dynamic range. Here we are again looking pixel for pixel at 100%. And you can see here, just some really beautiful patterns and colors and so on. Now, this camera is a little bit old at this stage. When I bought it, it was a little bit old. But look at the quality. You get a sense of what a 16-bit camera does here. Uh, all the way up here, you know, our depth of field is only 5.6, but we have got everything in focus, looking gorgeous. These cameras blow your mind. Dude's having a chat and uh, hidden down here in this 16 second exposure is a couple kissing. Look at them there as the garbage truck leaves. And this was the image made very popular by me. You've seen it before probably. Got a big canvas. There's those same two people. But just look. Look, look at the textures and the quality through here. Absolutely ridiculous. So it's, it's image quality on a different level, textures on a different level. I mean, just look, it's just, there's something about it that gives us this very realistic, like you're there. That's medium format. And this is a larger sensor than the one in the X1D. So this does it even more so, makes it feel very realis realistic. As you can see here, we're getting a little bit of more. Eh? That's because these tiles have got a little pattern in them. So that's the downside of a sensor like this. No anti-aliasing. Ridiculously sharp. And again, we can zoom in here and basically see history into the, the, every moment, every ding, every hit, every handprint. I mean, this is just gorgeous. Let's have a look at what I've done to this file. Brought down the highlights. I brought up the contrast because I like the contrast. I'll turn it off, see how that bit makes it flat out yet. Good call. Clarity will make it seem even more crunchy, but no. I think I like the way that it was. So this gives you an idea of Hasselblad's 16-bit files and the power of them. This might be another interesting one. So here we are seeing pixel for pixel, 100%. Just look at all this glorious detail through here. And again, this is 16 second exposure at 4.8. Let's zoom out a little bit. And look, you can see the city. Hasselblad's at their very best. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of this 60 megapixel beast at work. But like I said, this is this is really like there's no way there's no way you could shoot moving birds or moving sports or any of that sort of stuff. And look, people who are going to shoot that sort of stuff, they they they're not going to buy a camera like this. This is a very specific camera for very specific usage. I'm confident for those who have the money to buy something like this, a US dollars, it would be up over 10 grand for this body and this lens, I suspect, around that point. In Australia, I believe my friend said he spent $17,000 to get to this point. That's a sizable amount of cash. But do you get what you pay for? Well, look, ergonomically, as you can see here, it's got this really beautiful handle. Ergonomically, it's, it's gorgeous, and it's got some lovely design elements where buttons pop out like that. Yeah, it's gorgeous to look at. It's a great piece of industrial design. And I don't know if they got someone special in to design this camera or it was just an in-house design. It's beautiful. And actually, it is it is somewhat reminiscent, to be honest. It, it does it does seem to have a very similar kind of minimal vibe, similar to the Zeds, doesn't it? Even the lens design has a similar vibe. So that's interesting because people have derided the Zeds for their industrial design. I actually think they look quite nice. And, I, and, I, and it does have some similarities with this guy compared to everybody else. I found this on the web. Thanks for that, Siri. Appreciate that. I'm gonna pop out into the very cold, very windy afternoon. We've got some nice 
moody cloud cover going on. I like a bit of mood. This is this could probably end up looking really good as a crunchy black and white sort of image. And then we might pop on down to the bathing boxes that I can see down there. Very famous Melbourne icon, which these days is absolutely hammered by tourists seven days a week. We don't have any tourists, so I can even see from here, even so I'm probably a kilometre away, there's hardly any people down there when normally on a Sunday afternoon there would literally be hundreds of people. And today I can maybe see 10 or 20 people. Back to how it was before it became a tourist spot. When I was a kid, I used to come play down here. And in winter, there'd be nobody down here. Obviously, it's not winter yet, but on a cold day like today, there'd be no one down there. So what I want to do now is a pixel for pixel comparison just to see what really is the difference between a Z7 85mm 1.8 and a Hasselblad X1D 2 with its kind of 96mm equivalent lens that stops down to 3.5. Here are the files. We have the Z7 on the left. Sounds like a boxing match. And we have the Hasselblad on the right. And if we have a list, this is at 100%. If you look up here, both of them are at 100% on this 5K screen, 5K recording. We can see here it's the Z7 with the 85mm 1.8 and over here X. CD120, but that's the medium format measurement. Looking at it here, the detail rendering is, it feels similar. I mean, the, the Nikon is back slightly further, so things are slightly smaller. The Hasselblad's got about 10 or 11 mils further reach. But if we look at the detail and how things are being rendered and so on, you know, I, I think it's pretty damn good. And the Nikon seems to be controlling color abnormalities if you look really closely in here at the Hasselblad there's a bit of there's a bit of extra color going on in here that just simply isn't here on this one if we look at saturation etc there's nothing's been turned down this is the file as photographed on a gray old day really interesting that the camera on the left the Z7 is probably worth five a bit over five if you get it at a good price thousand dollars here in this country with this lens and the Hasselblad I was told cost about seventeen thousand dollars I wouldn't say that it's three times the difference I think it's marginally better here looking at it on screen what I can see is the Hasselblad seems to have the background more in focus and I wonder if that's either I wonder if that's to do with the medium format sensor it can basically get because the glass is a bit bigger and the sensor is a bit bigger it can actually get more in focus at, at any given f-stop it's just a theory that i'm throwing at you i have no idea to be honest the the z is at 6.3 and this one's at 6.8 but again that's not quite the same when you've got a bigger sensor so they may well be at the same f-stop relatively i'm not sure i'm sure someone out there knows please tell me this this is the z7 showing off i reckon it's looking pretty good just wanted to show you them side by side at 100 percent yep i mean that's nice that's holding together a bit of sunshine hitting that and the Hasselblad is doing a good job as well, but I don't really think it's doing it any better, is it? Interesting. Like I said, the background is definitely better on the Hasselblad, but I feel like the foreground, foreground and middle ground is just as good on the Z7 as the Hasselblad. Food for thought. This is not a competition. It's just to give you guys an idea of what you can get for five or six grand versus what you can get for 17, 18. Hmm beautiful piece of industrial design gorgeous optical engineering that Hasselblad is renowned for can't wait to see what this does look when the first one of these came out and I was starting to take mirrorless on board again after my original foray in uh, 2013 with the Sony a7R because I thought yeah mirrorless is going to be exciting I was really interested but it was just the cost that held me out of it because gosh it's a gorgeous piece of kit anyway Let's take some shots. The uh, sun's come out a little bit. The reason my friend had has bought this camera, he's got a very specific use case. As we talked about landscape, portraiture, and so on, he's doing art reproduction photography. Still subjects on tripods, lit indoors. This is the perfect camera to give you 
amazing picture quality. You don't need face detect. I don't think it has it. You don't need stabilization. It doesn't seem to have it because I can feel it's very unstabilized. And of course, his use case is perfect. He wants the best image and optical quality, best sensor, large photo sites, accurate color rendition, 16-bit. And the Hasselblad is absolutely perfect for it. So for him, it makes perfect sense. For him, this is exactly the right camera. And this is why when we talk about cameras and this is why when we're, uh, we're uh, thinking about what, what do we do You've got to think about what you do. And you might not need face detect. You might not need more than three frames a second. You might not need stabilization. You might not need full frame. There are so many options out there and we all have to keep thinking about the options that work best for us. For me, always through my entire career, once I could start to afford what I needed, it was all about image quality. So I was very happy to sacrifice frames per second for better high ISO. I was very happy to sacrifice super uber fast focusing for more megapixels. As you know, I live in a glass half full world. And I live in the world where you make the best of the equipment that you have. So if you have this you will have bought it full well knowing its limitations and the things that it is an absolute god at. It's been really fun to play with the Hasselblad and to show you a few of the files out of it. I haven't had it for very long. Those 16-bit files are extraordinary. As we've seen just going through them on the computer, we've got a lot of latitude, uh, obviously a lot of resolution to play with, and in general, it's just so good. So I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear, if, if budget was no limit, would you get a camera like this? Or is that something you wouldn't do? You just kind of go, oh, what's the point? I, I don't need to do something like that. I'd love to know what is your dream camera that's a good one isn't it yeah tell me your dream camera what can it be it can be anything could be a Leica could be a Hasselblad could be Sony a7R4 could be the new 8k Canon it could be a Fuji it could be a Pentax there's no rules here there's no right or wrong what's your favorite camera as always, and it has been just so good to see you. If you like what you see and this is your first time here, please subscribe. I would love to see you again. Please share. It makes us all smarter. Uh, please like. It helps get the word out there. And if you want to see over 150 episodes, just click on the Maddo and Photography down there. There's tons to look at. I'll see you again real soon. Okay, look after yourselves and stay safe. Bye. Got to take more photos. Let's go do it. Off we go. Well, thank you so much everyone for being here today. The, uh, the Hasselblad is a hell of a camera. It ain't gonna give you fast frame rates. It's not gonna give you fast focus, but it is gonna give you optically one of the best experiences that you could ever possibly find. And that's gotta be a good thing. That's gotta be an amazing thing. So as usual, the right camera for you is the camera that fits your use case. That's all there is to it. Stay safe, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.